Hello, this is going to be an overview of how to use a few features of uh, the program GeoGebra. Uh, we're going to look at the different views, different um, uh, whether objects can be free objects or dependent objects, some how to change properties, how to make buttons, and how to graph functions. So just a little bit about GeoGebra before I go through uh, these things. Uh, GeoGebra is is not a GSP clone. It is a different piece of software that was designed for a different purpose. And as you start to use GeoGebra, you become quite aware that it takes a, a bit of a different angle on uh, doing uh, different sort of mathematical things. So first, let's just talk about the views. Um, if you go up to View, you will see that there are little checkboxes for Algebra View and Spreadsheet View. So currently, we have on the left pane, this is the Algebra View. In the center, this is the Geometry View. And if I were to turn on, well, I will. I'll turn on the Spreadsheet View. You can see that appear on the right-hand side. And what's important about these three views is that everything that's in one is connected to the other two. So let's say I just create a point. So I'll go here to the point tool. You can see if you hover over something, it'll tell you what it is. And the little drop-down arrows here will give you more uh, different tools that you can use. So here I'm creating a point. I'm just going to click for a point. You can see the point is created. It's given a name. Um, and over here in the algebra view, I have a new free object. It's a point, and it gives me the coordinates. Now, if I go to the Move tool and click on the point and drag it around, you can see that the coordinates are updated as I move the point around in the geometry view. If you right-click on this, you can also trace its coordinates to the spreadsheet. So here they are as the spreadsheet. And if I drag it around, it will update the spreadsheet. Now, we're not going to be using the spreadsheet a lot right now, but it's important that these are three different representations of a mathematical object. And GeoGebra was based on this idea that you can represent something algebraically, geometrically, and you can also uh, trace things to a spreadsheet. Let me hide the spreadsheet view. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is just look at how to create a few objects and change their properties. So I've already created a, a point A. Let's create another point B. And I will also create a segment. Notice that everything is being named as I create it. That's because I have the algebra view open. If you, to, uh, if you close the algebra view and create objects, so here's a few points, uh, the points are still being named, just that the name is not being displayed. So if I open the algebra view back up, you can see there are two more points that I created, and they're free objects. Now, the segment is considered a dependent object because it depends on a and B, and you can see over here the algebra view uh, gives its name, A, and it also tells you the length of it. If I change the location of point A or B, I will also change the length of segment A. What's also nice about the algebra view here is you can hide objects by just clicking on the little circle next to them, so you can see I'm hiding and showing the segment. You can also click on an object and click delete and actually delete the object. So you don't have to always select things over in the geometry view. You can. You can keep selecting things over here and it works fine. But sometimes when you have a rather complicated construction, it's nice just to be able to click on uh, things over here. If you want to change the properties of something, you simply right click on it and go to object properties. Here you can change its name. You can actually change, if it's a free object, you can actually change how it's defined. You can change what you show. So right now it's just showing the name of the object, but I could have it show the name and the value, or just the value, or the caption. So I could type something in here, and then it will show the caption. What we're going to be doing in class today is we're going to be graphing functions. So the way that you input functions is you go down to the input bar, and you type in the function that you want to graph. So let's say I wanted to graph uh, just a parabola. So x squared plus, uh, say, 3x plus 4. Now notice I didn't put 3 times x. It will interpret 3x as 3 times x. 
and there is the parabola graphed. Let me just hide this other object right now. Notice the parabola has a name and if you drag it around you can see that in the algebra view the equation is constantly changing. Now we want to be able to build uh, a function where we can actually change the values of the coefficients. So we need to create some sliders and this is very easy to create sliders in GeoGebra. There's an actual slider tool and you click on the slider tool and if you click somewhere on the screen it will then bring up this little menu and say okay what kind of slider is it? We want it to be a number slider. Notice it's assigning a uh, name of B already. That's because I already have a name of A being used. And you can change the interval. So let's make it say negative 15 to positive 15. Ooh, 15. And incrementing in point 0.1 is fine. And let's do another one. So notice the tool is still selected so I'm just clicking again. C and I'll just change that 15 to 15. and one more. So now I have three sliders. Uh, if you go to the move tool you can move the point around. I also want to show you that if I have another uh, tool selected you can hit escape and it automatically jumps back to the move tool. That's a nice way to get out of a, a tool. Uh, now when I drag D around you can see that it changes the value of D and that value changes over here and now let's just define a function, a parabola, with uh, those coefficients. So I'll have b space x squared plus c space x plus d. Now I'm putting spaces in. You could also put multiplication, but I believe it will interpret it, uh, the space as multiplication. Yeah, so you can see that it's got it, the new functions in here. It's just barely on my screen. I could drag the whole screen down. And if I go back to the Move tool and change these values, you can see that, yes, indeed, I can move this object around. So notice how this is changing what we think of as the C value, right? Your standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C. So this is even though it's called D, it's actually C. And here is B, and here is A. All right, so this is everything I wanted to get through in the first part of this. Uh, if you right-click on these objects, you're going to be given some more options. You might try playing around with that a bit. And remember that anytime you're stuck with a tool, um, you can always hit Escape to go get back to the Move tool.